Music Theory, a complete course from grades 1 to 5. Lesson 35, Compound Time. Up until this point, the only time signatures you came across were in simple time. This means that the beats can be divided into two. In other words, a crotchet can be divided into two quavers. A minim can be divided into two crotchets, etc. Now you will learn about compound times, where the beat divides into threes. Six eight time literally means there are six quavers in a bar, but there are not six beats in a bar. Instead, there are two dotted crotchet beats in a bar, and each dotted crotchet is worth three quavers. Look at these two examples. In the first example, notice how the quavers are grouped together in threes, and the beats in the second bar are dotted crotchets. In the second example, there are still six quavers in the bar, but they are grouped differently. They're grouped in twos, and the beats, therefore, are crotchets, because two quavers make a crotchet. Some other time signatures that you might come across at Grade 3 ABRSM and Trinity are 9-8 time, which means three dotted crotchet beats in a bar, and 12-8 time, four dotted crotchet beats in a bar. There are three more words that you should also learn. Duple, triple, and quadruple. Now, their meanings are quite obvious. Duple means two beats in a bar, triple means three beats in a bar, and quadruple means four beats in a bar. So, for example, simple triple time would be three four time, three beats in a bar, with a simple time signature such as crotchet beats. On the other hand, 12-8 time would be compound quadruple time. Compound because the beats are dotted crotchets and quadruple because there are four beats in a bar. There are also a couple of other things you need to be aware of in preparation for an examination with regard to compound time. The first is how to convert a tune from simple time to compound time. Look at these two examples. Now, both of the above tunes sound exactly the same, even though they have different time signatures. And a typical question might ask you, rewrite this melody in simple time so that it sounds the same. You will notice that in order to convert from simple to compound time, you lose triplets and add dots and vice versa. From compound time to simple time, you add triplets and lose dots. That is because in simple time, the beats are simple crotchets. They don't have dots. But in compound time, the beats are dotted crotchets, groups of three quavers. Also, in simple time, you can't have three quavers in a beat unless you make a triplet out of them. But in compound time, three quavers are the natural way of writing quavers in a beat. So you don't need a triplet sign in compound time, but you do in simple time. Finally, you need to bear in mind how to group notes and rests together in compound time. The main rule, as with any time signature, is to keep things a beat at a time. Let's consider these four bars. In the first bar, notice how the fourth quaver is not joined to the other three. That's because it is part of a different beat. A beat in compound time is three quavers. The fourth quaver is another beat. In the second bar, a dotted minim can be used for two beats. In the third bar, there are two separate quaver rests. Now, I know that two quavers make a crotchet, but you can't write a crotchet rest here because these two quavers belong to separate beats. If you consider the first crotchet, which is worth two quavers, and then the quaver rest, that makes one beat. And then the next quaver rest goes with the next two quaver notes to make another beat worth three quavers. And in the last bar, there are separate semi-quaver rests. 
Again, it is true that two semiquavers could be replaced by a quaver rest. But composers prefer to finish one quaver at a time. In other words, the first semiquaver note and semiquaver rest make one quaver. So let's finish off that quaver first, then we'll go on to the next quaver, which is the next semiquaver rest and the semiquaver note. And so it's easier for the performer to read and the composer to write if he can think of a quaver at a time. Now, let's have a quick test to see how much you have understood. Where would you need to draw a bar line in this extract? First of all, notice the time signature is 6-8. That means six quavers in a bar but grouped in threes. Now, the easy way to do this is to notice that the notes are naturally grouped in threes, like we just learned. You should always group notes a beat at a time. So the first group of three quavers is the first three notes. You could work out mathematically that we have one and a half quavers, then half a quaver, and another quaver. That makes three quavers. So there's one beat. Then you have a quaver, two semiquavers, one quaver, that makes three quavers again, another beat. But it is a lot easier to just see the beats by looking at the beams because the beams usually join notes together that are in the same beat. Now let's remember that in 6-8 time we have two beats of three quavers each. So the bar line will go between the two tight C's here. Now, I'll see you in the next video by clicking the card on the left, or if you want more practice on this topic, click the card on the right.